Thanks. Um, she's currently the director of um, the art galleries at Providence College. Please join me in welcoming her. So painting 
is also sort of like that. Um, this sort of threshold where there's one zone becomes another zone, or um, something is communicated um, on a surface into some other type of information. Um, and screens are also kind of like that too. So I like think I like to think about those things and maybe draw some equivalencies there, or draw out some of those relationships in paintings. Um, and so one of the Jamie Lynn has written very eloquently and at length about some of this work, and one of the concepts that we draw on is spatiality. Um, it's a philosophical idea that sort of thinks about, and one of the reasons I like it is because it's a way to think about spaces that's really distinct from portraiture, and it has more to do with like um, terms of communication and thinking about how expression on the face is sort of a, this analogous condition or just an analogy for other types of communication like language and anything where you know there's a sort of condition and then terms of communication within that field or something. Um, so one of the things that this idea was written about by Deleuze and Bakari, and one of the things they talk about is how anything in the world could be spatialized. Um, anything like a parking garage or a tea kettle or a shoe or an outfit um, could sort of assume this quality of like looking bad, um, of expressing itself or <coughs> seeming to be all of a sudden um, animate or something. And I don't know if you guys have ever had that experience of like not necessarily seeing a literal face you know, in the clouds or in the landscape, but sometimes just feeling like an inanimate, inanimate object <clears throat> is kind of looking back at you in some way. And so I like to think about how paintings could do that, not necessarily by peering out through eyeballs, but by kind of having some sort of um, confrontational presence that seems to, you know, almost present a subjectivity to you as a viewer. is that obviously material is really a big part of my work and it's um, something that's really interesting to me. I've always been um, really invested in materials and in material uh, experimentation. And one of the things that I really need in artwork is um, <clears throat> to find ways where ways to sort of embody meaning in material. <laughs> and so, <clears throat> in this case, one of the ways I try to do that is, um, you see in a lot of these paintings, there's this like, sort of oval with two dots on it in the, in the painting. And, um, oh, stay, you all the other stuff. That's weird. I'm okay. So there's this kind of little chunk, compositional chunk in a lot of this work. And it's made out of acrylic paint that's just poured onto like a waxy surface, a plasticky surface, and then peeled up. And so it becomes this like freestanding kind of paint mark thing. Um, and so then I clip it <clears throat> and paste it onto the canvas basically. So what we're seeing is the back of a mark. <clears throat> um, the like kind of reverse side of it. So I really like this process because, you know, when I'm making something like that, it's this very, you know, it's almost like a cartoon of a painter in the studio, like flinging things onto a surface and letting this goop sort of just commingle and it kind of has this flavor of, you know, kind of really expressionistic kind of painterly catharsis or something. But in fact, it turns out to be this like plasticky, puddle that you can place very self-consciously um, and very sort of rationally. So it's this funny kind of tense object that encompasses um, a sort of expressionistic <coughs> note and then a really self-conscious or calculated kind of note. Um, 
Um, so I like that it can be something <coughs> that appears to be one way and is actually kind of another way. Sort of embodying like this id super ego tension in, in a single card. Hey Anne, I'm interrupting, I'm sorry. No, you're not. I, I, just, actually, want, I just wanted to know um, about the title. 30 spots. <coughs> you had to imagine what the inside of your body looked like, you know, maybe it would be like these gooey, kind of like oranges and reds and kind of bloody, like, I don't know, colors. And so some of the palette, I think, is this kind of like imagined viscera, um, the, the hue of imagined viscera. And <coughs> when it comes to, like, conceiving of color, um, thinking about ideas related to color, you know, color theory, there's a lot of different orientations that exist in color theory. Um, you can take a sort of historical, scientific um, approach to color theory. Um, there's a kind of, you know, sort of culturally um, conditioned part of it where color becomes associative. So like red is a passion of color, but we made that up. You know, there's a, there's a, that part of it that's really just cultural association. And Another way to approach color I found recently is in this kind of self, this weird like self-help color theory genre. Um, so I found all of these color manuals from the 1980s um, where people say like, what color, what's your color? And then like, what's your complexion? And it's which color should you wear for your complexion? So this woman, Carol Jackson, wrote these books called um, Color Me Beautiful and Alive with Color and she has like a whole empire around these ideas where she tells you you're like a summer or a spring or an autumn. Have you guys heard this? Like there's like all the complexions are seasonal. And so then if you're a winter, like you can only wear these kinds of blues. And she frames it all as this kind of like self-improvement. Um, you know, it's very gendered, it's like all for women, and then she has like a man's version that's really different, um, but it's about how to like, you know, present yourself to the world in this like, you know, your best way, in your best self. Um, and so I thought it was really funny that there could be this other option for color theory that's really like a self-help option. Um, and so 30 Special Colors comes from Carol Jackson's uh, tagline, which is like, you know, whatever your complexion, you'll glow and you're 30 special colors. So you can buy the book, you know, the, you know, you have like a, a, ta well, a tailor, like a personalized palette, you know, for your 30 special colors. Um, so that's where that idea came from. Okay. Um, do, do you all have